Hello YouTube, welcome to the fake Merc character study part 10. And by God, do I have some juicy stuff for you today. So, I'm going to start with some focus on what happened last time. Because part 9 was pretty much 80% of talking about the fake plates that Bloho uses. And I told you that all of that was based off of a little hint that I had, things I didn't add up, his strength moving back and forth, and overall the simple implication of him being a lifelong liar, and therefore that he couldn't be trusted on anything. But since this video came out, new information has started leaking, and I actually have a, an individual who will know who he is, because he's going to watch this video, who sent me a very interesting link. And that link was a direct URL to a video where Bloho uses blue plates, blue rogue calibrated plates that he claims are real, that are 100% fake. And now I have proof, I have conclusive evidence. So, in the description, or rather in the comments, in the pinned comments, I will link that video. I will just type the title of the video because if I put the link, I could, would, I could get flagged for um, spam. So I'll just give you the title because I know for a fact that Bloho watches these, which means that the second he sees it, he's going to take it down. Issue is, it's already too late. I've downloaded the video. I have sent the video to multiple people who've downloaded it as well. The proof is now there. And I'm going to now go over the video and tell you why it's proof. So in part nine, I told you that I had a strong suspicion that the blue rogue uh, plates were fake. And some people, the defense they have is, well, fake rogue plates don't exist. That's not true. You can actually buy them off of uh, Alibaba and you can get them directly from China. They do make them. It's tough to find because there's not a single manufacturer. It comes off and on, sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not, because Rogue is trying really hard to fight against it. But apparently, our boy Hemingway was able to get his greasy paws on a pair because he owns one, at least one. And in the video that you're going to see in the pin comment, if you can get to it before Hemingway gets to it, you will notice that. And if you can't, don't worry, other websites and uh, other YouTube channels are going to re-upload the video. So, in this video, you see him doing overhead press, and pull-ups using 45s, the blue 45s. And these are the legs that I told you were fake, 100% fake, because his strength just didn't make sense. And these are the legs that he really wanted to be strong at because Alex from Alpha Destiny is really strong at these legs and he didn't want to get cocked by him. Therefore, he pretended to be strong. And it's funny too because he copied the exact same training that Alex would do at the time, which is do very high volume on the overhead press, so like a 5x10 with only 135, which is a feat that he's completely incapable of doing. So he had to use fake plates and also on the pull-ups to do some reps with a 45. So in this video that was sent to me by a subscriber, there's something really strange going on because you see him use the, use the plates, he's lifting it like it's nothing, but there, there, was, a, there was a problem. I couldn't put my, my finger on it, but I knew that something was wrong. And the subscriber couldn't really tell me either. He just knew they were fake and I knew too. So I just did some digging. I went on the Rogue website. I looked at their plates. I compared the back of the plate. Two stickers. Okay, Bloho has two stickers as well. The color is the same. Okay, same color. The size is the same. It's the calibrated. They're really thin. But visually, something was wrong. And when I compared side to side, I realized that the issue was the Rogue calibrated plates are steel and they look solid. And Bloho, Bloho's plates looked flimsy. They looked weak, just like him. And so I tried to find a detail that I could give you guys to prove you to you that they're fake. And then I realized it. The ridge. If you look at a blue calibrated plate from the back, it's smooth. But when you turn it around, there's a ridge. So there's the numbers uh, in, inside the plate. And then there's a ridge to allow you to grab it. Issue is when you buy garbage from China, they don't take the time to do that. So on his plate, you can see that there is no ridge. There's a slight bump, but it's not the deep ingrained ridge that you see with real calibrated plates. And if you go on the Rogue, web Rogue website, you'll see that there is like a shadow. It's, it's actually a deep ridge. So that's it. Those plates are fake. 
And you can see that Fake also when he does pull-ups, because the way they dangle, they don't dangle like something that weighs 50 pounds. They dangle like something that weighs five, because they're all over the place. And then the way he moves them too, he's trying to pretend they're heavy, but the way he moves it like diagonally, it makes no sense. So again, if you get lucky enough, look at the video, tell people in the comment who won't have the chance because I guarantee you he's going to take that video down. And by doing so, he's going to prove my theory. He's going to prove that those plaques are fake and that he keeps using them because they're the exact same color. So from the side, if you look at just the bar, when he stacks 45s, there's no way to tell that that plate is fake because you can just see the side. It's the same color. But when they are individually used, now you can tell. And... I mean, it's Blow who we're talking about, of course, he's an idiot, so he forgot about that video. But the issue is that he's done that several times because he really wanted to show Alex how strong he was on those lifts, and therefore there's plenty of evidence. So if on Social Blade, you see him taking down a bunch, and you see him losing views from the past, that's where it's coming from. So, that's my proof. Proof number two, it's sort of more of a confirmation, but for the bumper plate for the deadlifts, I actually, again, did some digging and I realized one thing. The technical plates are brighter than the normal look plates, so they would stick out. But Elico, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Elico also does technical plates. And guess what? They're the exact same color as the Rogue 55 pound bumper plates. So I'm pretty sure he just grabbed a, a pair of these and he's, uh, he's slapping them when he deadlifts to pretend to he's stronger than he is. So he can add 100 pounds on his deadlift. So that's it for the fake plates. I'm not going to talk about that anymore because to me it's 100% confirmed. He is using fake plates. The, the blue plates are fake. The, re the red plates are fake. The yellow plates are fake. The greens are fake too because the greens I found on Alibaba as well. So same thing, they're five pounds. And there's at least one pair of the black ones that is fake, but he doesn't really use them anymore. So that's that. He's not a strength coach. He's not even... Even if his lips were real, he would be weak, but they're not even real. So... Now let's get into what's currently happening with him because every single month I like to touch upon the current set of his channel before moving on to the men's. So recently, Blow has been falling back onto his old habit of starting to try drama with other people because when he's actually trying to be informative, no one watches his videos and he gets 700 views, which for a channel that has 100k subs is really pathetic. So recently he started beef with uh, Mike Israeltel. He started beef with... Greg Doucet, he started beef with uh, the Kaneski guy, and the most important of these three to me is the Greg Doucet one, because the way he did it is, he said that Greg doesn't know how to do good mornings, which maybe, I don't know, and then, after that, when Greg actually went, because Greg, of course, blows a fuse the second you make a video about him, so he's going to be in your comments having a, having a PTSD attack, he commented on Bloho's channel and Bloho made a response. And in the response, he said, and I quote, that he would slap the taste out of Greg's mouth if he ever stepped up to him in his house, which he's back. The badass Bloho of hold is back. It's only a, a question of month until he starts, you know, wearing the military don again and having his free rate and pretending to be a military member. It's going to happen again, guys. He's stuck in a, an, an endless cycle of repetition. He doesn't know how to stop himself. So now he's LARPing as a bad boy again. And I mean, I would pay good money to see a fight between uh, Greg and Bloho. It would be one for the ages. Never going to happen, of course, because Bloho never comes out of his cock shed. But it's insane that he, again, he tries the same tactics and... Thankfully, Greg is not interested. He's not going to make a response video because Blaha is too small and Greg knows that it's not going to get him any clout, so he won't do it. So any amount of relevance that uh, Blahino could have gotten is not going to happen. But he's, he's threatening people again. So we'll see. Maybe he's going to start insulting Alpha Destiny again. Who knows? And what happened too is that he claimed in one of his comments to have an FFMI of 28. For information that's higher than Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's, that, that's higher than, than Serge Nubre, which would make sense because, you know, Blahino said that he's bigger than Serge. So, of course, it, it actually matches. And that shows also how delusional he is when it comes to his body fat. He, he underestimates his body fat so much that he ends up with a completely irrational FFMI. And at no point does he stop and think, okay, 
I look in the mirror, I see a fat walrus, I see a, a, an obese potato, but my FFMI is 28. Okay, which is wrong? Is it my perception? Is it my eyesight? Or is it the fact that I don't know how to calculate FFMI and I am underestimating my body fat by 10%? No, it's the mirror. The mirror must be wrong. It, he can, I mean, 28. If he's 28, what am I, 45? What is the next step in his lap? And he also claimed to have 30 inches thighs, which, one, he doesn't. Even at his stage, even obese as he is, he doesn't have 30 inches thighs. And even if he did, he's fat. It's cottage, it's, it's not muscle, it's cottage cheese. It doesn't count. I mean, it, it's like claiming that you have the biggest core, the best six pack, because you have a big gut. It's, it doesn't correlate. But again, it really shows to you that he's obsessed with his appearance. He doesn't care about strength at all. He cares about bodybuilding, but he's too lazy to actually diet and have a good body. And therefore, he laughs, he laughs, he laughs, he laughs. So that was sort of for uh, the current situation with Blahino, what he's doing, etc. He also found out recently that uh, his little breakfast chats are not going to carry him through uh, 2021 anymore. When he started doing them, people were happy because they thought it was the current events being brought back, but then they realized it was just watching some guy rumble, sitting on a box squat, uh, half swallowing some rice and bison. So people lost interest, of course. And what's funny with Blow is that he always melts things until the very end. He, he doesn't understand the concept of trying to not spoil the audience too much. Don't give them all what they want at once. Spare it so that they stay interested. But no, for him, when something works, he does it until it destroys him. We've seen that with the Nadia or Nuts in the past. He did a few, he got very popular, it went to his head, and then he only did that until he was exposed. Until he got into a, an actual lawsuit with Lane Norton and he got destroyed in the process. So his new thing, because the breakfast chat don't work anymore, if you want to see a fat pig eating, you just go to the zoo or petting zoo, he is now using his clients as a way to get clicks. Team Blow, right? And I explained last time that Team Blow Ho doesn't exist. It's again a lie. And none of the people that he claims to have coach, coached came out and said anything, which is interesting because you would think that with YouTube Fitness, he has a big channel. He's respected. He's a public figure. He's a, he's a strength athlete, right? Athlete, sorry, athlete. People would want to be associated with him. So how come out of the people he claims he's coaching, never said anything about it and seem to have actually distantiated, distantiated themselves from him. It's interesting, right? It's as if he's, he's a, you know, he's a leper. People, don't, people know that if you hang out with him, if your name is associated with him, you're going to lose, uh, you're going to lose a limb. So that's what's happening right now. And with the client thing, He's making his clients do good morning, and that struck me because I just realized one thing with him. He's trying again to pull an Alpha Destiny. Alpha Destiny got popular, whether in good or bad, because of his rag pull above the meme. And all of his clients, all of the people who did Alpha Destiny's uh, natural hands, did that lift. And it became his trademark, his signature movement. And Blow decided he needed one as well. But think about it. What did Alex have? Alex had a pretty yoked upper body and a big pair of traps. So he picked a lift that was aligned with that. But what does Bloho have? He has lunch lady arms. He has a goose neck. He has no abs to show for. He has titties. He has no calves. Where are your calves, Mr. Genetics? So the last thing he has is big fat legs and a fat ass. That's all he has. And, and lumps on his hips, like a woman. So he set off on the one lift that he actually has some decent leverages for, which is the good morning. And it's also the reason why he loves the deadlift so much and why he lies about his deadlift strength, because he's, it's all he has. I mean, he can't, he can't bench to save his life. He has no gains, so he has to be at least strong on the lower body. That's his claim to fame. He's a strength athlete, so he needs to have strong legs. Because we all know that you can tell if an athlete is good if he can box squat 500 pounds. Like, that's the barometer. That's how you know. So, since he does it, he makes his clients do it. I've seen the clients do it. They do it with a rounded back. When he sees that, this idiot, instead of correcting the form, he says, oh, it's good. They're learning how to strain underweight. 
At some point, if you just want to snap your spine, you go to a construction worker crew, you just ask them to drop a bag from 50 feet onto your back, and they'll do it for cheaper. They'll do it for like a six pack of beer. Bro is charging you 250 pounds to destroy your back. I think that's, that it's not a good deal to strike. And Bro can't correct anyone's form because he also deadlifts and good mornings with terrible form. I have watched recently this idiot do good mornings on pins, which he's copying uh, Westside uh, Barber again, because of course he's not, uh, he's not original at all. And it's worse than that. He's copying Alex, who's copying Westside. So it's like, we're way down the line of being incompetent here. The issue is that when he does it, he slams the bar. So there's no negative because he's not controlling the weight. And then he corrects his torso angle and he squats the bar up for like this much range of motion. So that, that's not a good morning at this point. It's a pin squat. It's a pin one fourth of the range of motion squat. Who, who with a positive IQ looks at this and think, oh, I'm going to pay that guy for coaching. I mean, really, it clearly knows nothing about training. That's not how you do good mornings for strength or for size. That aside, this was just the updates because now we're getting into the men's. So just for you guys, because uh, I appreciate the support you're giving this series and I actually have a ton of fun making these episodes. I wrote all of the data, all of the information on clean sheets. This is sheet number four. I have... I have four, five, six, seven. I have another four of these that are waiting in the shadows. Keep in mind that one of these takes me at least four episodes to go through. So you make the calculus in your head. We're going to start today. Today, I'm going to focus mainly on his entire effort, all of the lies he spread to propagate a certain image of himself. And I'm going to debunk them all and we're going to make fun of him as we go. So the first thing is that to go back to the strength athlete thing, he likes to pretend to be a powerlifter. That's his big claim to fame. He's not a bodybuilder. He's all about strength. The issue is that in terms of accomplishments in powerlifting, he has absolutely nothing. He won, he won quote unquote. He, he placed in one show in the UK in bumfuck nowhere where there was no actual competition and he wasn't even top one. And that's it. That's, that's all of his accomplishments. The UK meet is the one meet that we know about. He never competed again after that. And in this meet, if you look at his numbers, they weren't high at all. He's weaker than he was back then, now. But back then, he benched 335. He squatted around, I think it was shy of, of 550, maybe lower than that. And he deadlifted around 580. So he didn't even deadlift in comp 600. Keep in mind that that was at a body weight of 198, if I'm not mistaken. And don't, don't fall for the age thing. That's not competitive, period. And that's back when he was uh, actually blasting drugs. He was at his strongest back then. He's not as strong anymore. He regressed massively. The strength that you see is because of the fake plates. So he has no legs to stand on when it comes to powerlifting because there are kids who are 17 natural who are stronger than him. So he has no credentials on that. And it's funny too with... Uh, the obsession he has with the medals that he scored, with, with his piss poor totals, because you could still st see them in, his, in the back, he would put them on his walls. But these are participation medals, they mean nothing. Of course, he would want you to believe that that's not the case, that he was actually an elite lifter. And so, back in the days, and I'm sure that if you still ask him, you know, he's going to say the same thing, he claimed to be invited to Woods. Meaning that he said, oh, I'm such talented lifter, I am so strong that they want me competing with the best in the woods. And of course, it's, it's fake, it's a lie, but it's not a lie the way you would think. See, with uh, blah, blah, he, he, he takes a portion of the truth and then he puts makeup on it enough that you could never realize that it was this in the first place. The reality is that, in, depending on the federation, if you place at a local meet, you are automatically invited to woods. Does it mean you're going to do well at Woods? No, you're just invited. They say, okay, you have the qualifications to enter, please enter. But it's not like the president is sending you a letter directly, kissing your ass and saying, oh, please, Mr. Hemingway, come to our competition. No, they, they couldn't care less if you don't come. It's just a way for them to make money. Because if you enter, you have to pay a fee. It's a business. 
but of course he doesn't present that as is. He's basically saying that he's the Queen of Britain and that he was awaited like the Messiah. And of course, he didn't go because he would have looked like a clown competing with people who actually lived. And you see the continuation with that claim of being invited to Woods because he constantly claims to break world records. Nether Beast does the same. They, they might be long lost brothers. They both claim to have broken world records in their apartments. There's so much wrong with that. First off, a world record is only broken in competition. And I would even add in certain competitions because there are some like backyard meets where people break world records that have no legitimacy in my opinion. For him, he doesn't even have that because it would mean actually having to go out and talk to people. He says that he broke a deadlift world record for Texas in his age group in his bedroom with fake plates. Seems legit to me. I think we should just give him the medal at this point because we should, he's trustworthy, right? And it blows my mind that in his comments there are powerlifters, and I say that with big quotation marks because it's an insult to actual powerlifters who lap it up. They don't understand. They don't fight it, right? Can I do that too? Can I pretend to have broken world records? Guys, I can deadlift 5,000 pounds. Eddie Hall, who... I'm the, I'm the strongest man on earth. I just never showed you because who cares? Just send me the, the cash prize, please. I'll send you my address in the description. So again, strength community, which is really just a bunch of people who look unesthetic and who are trying to cope using strength as an excuse when they're not even strong. That also serves his goal of trying to be a cough. Because if you're a cough, in the strength community, you have to be strong, or at least you have to be able to show that you're strong and pretend to be. And since his new thing is that he's trying to make an inco income by being uh, a cough, which is really just a camouflage because he's still getting disability checks and he's trying to he's trying to find a way to misdirect your attention so that you don't try and guess where the money that keeps him alive is actually coming from. The answer is your pocket. If you're a taxpayer in the US, you are subsidizing Bloho's lifestyle. Congratulations. So he posted as a cough, elite powerlifter. But if you look at uh, YouTube Fitness, can you cite me one serious powerlifter who's not completely disconnected from reality, aka mentally ill, or aka just doesn't pay attention to what's going on, who associates with him? I mean, you look at bodybuilding, there's a lot of butt buddies in there, but powerlifting, those guys train together all the time. They hang out, they talk about RPE, they have a round table of cough. Where is Bloho in this? I mean, the last time I heard his name at a round table was when Omar Izov was making fun of him it, it, on a podcast, openly, which then led to Bloho slapping fake plates on the bar, then lifting 600 pounds and saying, easy, and calling Omar, Omar Izov's name, like it's a call out, which, by the way, is the first time he actually used fake plates on the deadlift, I think. It's because his ego was triggered, and since Omar actually can pull 600, he wanted to prove him that he can pull more. So that's Bloho's life. I mean, no one in the politician community respects him, likes him at all. And that makes total sense because Bloho claims that Wilkes, Wilkes score are completely useless and that pound for pound strength is stupid. So he's basically buying into the mindset that some super heavyweights have of saying there is no weight class in the jungle. Like, you know those fat guys who can barely pull 600 and they don't like that some dude who's 180 can pull 800 on the deadlift in sumo style and they just have to find an excuse? Oh, my bench is higher. Well, yeah, you have 150 pounds on the guy. What do you think? You have this much range of motion because your gut is up to here. Bloho doesn't even have that because he has a shit bench. But he still falls on the same excuses. He's a fat so and he's trying to explain why. He's trying to say, oh, but I'm a big guy and I'm disadvantaged. I'm at a disadvantage because of the works. And he actually used that answer and that excuse to explain why Alpha Destiny is so much stronger than him and why Jeff Nippert is also so much stronger. These are two small guys. I mean, they're, they're buff, but if you put them next to someone who's like 6'6", they're going to look small because most anyone who looks small next to someone who's 6'6", but they have a smaller frame because they're, sm they're shorter guys. And yet they completely out to Bloho while weighing almost in the almost 50 pounds less than he does. And Bloho also used the excuse of size by saying, oh, but they have better leverages. 
but that's not true. He's 5'7". He's almost as short as them. I think they're like 5'5". Five five. I don't know how short Jeff is, but he can't use that excuse. He's a shorty as well. He's a manlet. And yet, his bench sucks, his deadlift sucks, his squat sucks. So how come? Well, the answer is that it's because as an individual, he sucks. But he has to use excuses to explain his shortcomings. So that's already major. I mean, a lot of powerlifters disagree with that. There's a lot of top powerlifters that are sub 200 pounds on this platform who will say that pound for pound strength is, def is definitely a thing. You have to apply it because if you don't, it ha it's too advantageous to the guys who get to bulk up to insane numbers because they have the frame. You don't want that in powerlifting. You want a plurality of, of body types or frames. The thing with Bloho too, and I don't know if I'm going to mention it again, but you really have to keep in mind one thing. He's way overweight. I mean, powerlifting has slowly shifted, even the, the top classes, from trying to pack on as much mass as possible to trying to actually carry heavy muscle and lean mass to be efficient, and also for health purposes, of course. Bloho hasn't caught up to that yet because he's really afraid of losing strength. Keep in mind that he struggles to, to bench three plates at 220 pounds. If he actually dialed it down to where he's supposed to be at 5'7", which is around 170, he would lose so much strength. I wouldn't be surprised if he struggled to bench two plates. I'm honest with you right now, because his bench is really, really garbage. And all of his other lifts would, of course, suffer because he doesn't belong in the, two, in the, the 220 class at all. He doesn't have the frame for that. And it's the reason why he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. To be competitive, he would have to die it down. To look sort of aesthetic, he would have to die it down. And even that is, is questionable. But for him to be able to still claim that he's strong and match up to Alphonsini and Jeff, he needs to be way overweight. And that's why he never loses weight. He's stuck in that endless cycle of, oh, I need to cut to be aesthetics and for, for the outreach. And, oh, I need to bulk because I'm losing strength. He's always in that panic mode, which is why he always loses and gains the same 10 pounds and he makes no progress. So that's for the whips, that's for the pound for pound. And I'm just going to end by saying that He's lifted the same weights since 2013. Back in the days when he was in the UK and he had a garage gym. And I hesitate to call that a garage gym because it really just looked like a shed. You know, I, I have one in, in, my, uh, in my yard. It's just, it's a piece of wood where I put other pieces of wood. There's no better explanation. The only person that lives or lives in there is, is mice. That's it. They spend the winter in there. I would never let a human spend time in there. It's too dangerous. It's, it's not safe. It's not comfortable. That's where he lifted. It, it's like he plugged a squat rack in the middle of uh, a landfill and he lifted there for like a year. And his strength back then was higher than his strength now or similar. And you would ask again, how come? Back in the days, he was actually blasting gear. So how did he, man he maintain his strength? Apparently now he's natural. Well, he didn't. He just invested in fake plates. But those days were the tits because that's when he was lifting with those weird uh, toe shoes, the frog toes where you can move each toe individually, which is repulsive. I mean, he's already disgusting looking. He doesn't need to add another, another slabber of shit on top of the pie. It's already too much. So that's that. Before moving on, I'm going to check your time. Nice. Okay. There is a thing, and maybe you share that, uh, that opinion, maybe you don't, that I personally dislike a lot in the lifting community, especially in the strength community, and that's the age cope. It's people whose strength sucks, whose posture sucks, whose health sucks, and their excuse is, oh, but I'm old. And without fail, these people are always in their 40s. Like... We're not talking some old, venerable man at the top of the mountain with a beard up to his dick. We're talking about a guy who's middle-aged. At what point did we get to a situation where you get to claim to be almost senile when you're in your 40s? That shouldn't be the case. You're supposed to peak in strength and aesthetics in your 30s and 40s, if you're real natural. And yet, he's at this age and he's already trying to make you believe that it's insane he can even move. Like, oh... I get up off of my chair by myself, clap for me. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's a given. You're supposed to be able to be mobile until you're like 80. And at this point, you get to have a cane, maybe. But that's his big thing. 
And it's insane to see the number of old farts in his comment section too. The guys who are in their 40s and who talk like they were in Vietnam t together, like, oh, we went through so much and our bodies are so beaten down. Your bodies are beaten down because you're idiots and you don't know how to lift. It has nothing to do with the practice in itself. But it's a way for him to pretend that his numbers are good because he's old. And it's the reason why also all of the, uh, like the age categories in powerlifting and in sports in general, who cares about that? I don't care if you're old. If you're old, you're past your prime, just leave. Like you, don't, you have nothing to do anymore, just leave. I mean, it's impressive when some 90-year-old deadlifts 400 pounds. That's impressive. But not a guy in his 40s, not a guy on drugs. Who cares about that? He's, he sucks. That's it. There's no excuse. If you can't compete with the big dogs in their prime, leave. You, you just don't believe. You just don't, don't belong there. And it's also a thing where I would, I wish we could look up to all the lifters and take advice from them, you know. But the issue is that they all suck. I mean, I can't even name you one guy, at least in the politing community. Ah, maybe, maybe. But most of them, they are bitter because their golden, golden days are behind them and they're really envious of the young bucks like you and I. And therefore, they are trying to spin this entire web of, oh, I've been in the Iron Game for 20 years, you need to respect me. Well, no. No, Grandpa, we don't need to respect you. I only respect strength. I respect size. If you have neither of these, I don't respect you. Or at least that's true in this community if you're trying to give advice to people because he's trying to pass himself as a role model, which is laughable. I mean, if you look at his life, no one should take advice from him. If anything, we should put him on, on a leash and show him around schools and tell kids, okay, this is Blahino. Anything he's done in life, do the exact opposite and you'll be fine. You'll be just fine. We can show him to like drug addicts and tell them, if you keep doing crack, look at his teeth, you're going to have the same teeth. Do you want to still lose drugs? I guarantee you we'll, they're all going to quit. We can solve and we can, we can salvage America. We can end the, the war on drugs. We just need Blahino. We, that's all we need. He can actually be a solution for once in his life. So he has no mobility. He's a hunchback. He's an actual hunchback, by the way. That's not an insult. It's a, it's a factual statement. When you look at him from the side, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do his posture, but he's like this. He's like this. So his head is all the way there like a turtle and the, the back is rounded. I, I don't know how he survives like this, but that's the result of spending all that time hunched over on his computer, not working. So he gets what, gets what deserves, as Genova would say. And that also leads to him having terrible form on everything because yes, posture has an impact on the way you lift. He's uh, sterile, 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 which if you want a mint, if you want a quality mint, you go back to the video of him finding out that he's sterile and his girlfriend, Moon Cookie, sh cheers on him. Like she's, she's sipping on wine and she's, she's just full of joy because she's like, oh my God, whew, I'm not going to get pregnant with that guy, that guy's see that genetic dead hand. Thank God. And you can see in his eyes that he's dead. But it's great for us because he's not going to reproduce. So that's, that's a relief. Where was I? No family, of course, because his entire family... Uh, what is the term? His entire family cut him off, basically. They don't want anything to do with him anymore because he's a narcissist. And narcissists destroy everything around them and eventually they end up alone. He has no money. And uh, that's the end, of course. That, that, this entire line was pretty much to say that the, the first side he's trying to present for his life is a lie. He has none of the things that he presents. Keep in mind also with the money stuff that your money is going into stimulus checks that he receives because he's in, he's in the right bracket because he has no income. So again, your hard work is keeping him alive. I don't know how that makes you feel. I personally, I'm not a big fan. And for the age thing, I want to rebound on something too because for someone who pretends to be so wise... For someone who actually had a channel, again, called Ask Jason, where he was getting lifestyle and philosophy advice to people, where he makes videos telling obese people to like get their stuff together, I'll get to that, but it's insane to see how immature he is, because he might be more immature than the Gymshark kids who are 14 and make videos, because these kids have the excuse of being young, but he doesn't. He's been on this earth for a long time. And yet he still has the same flaws. And that includes insulting his audience or 
the time, which, what is going on in this comment section? I see some guys asking like a, a nice normal question and he blows his fuse. And the reason why is because he doesn't know who's a troll and who isn't. And that is messing with his head because anyone's the enemy now. The only people who is not really aggressive with is guys that he knows and he can go on their channel and he can find a, a familiar face. But that's it. The rest is just an endless sea of potential jihadi. And he's terrified of that. So he's always on his, on his guard. What he doesn't get, however, is that a good chunk of these people are just random kids who found his channel and asked a nice question and he bans them. So he's destroying his audience as he goes and then he wonders why his channel doesn't grow. So that's all the insults. He constantly tries to make his life cooler than it is, which is, teenagers do that. You know, when you're a teenager, you don't get laid, you don't have any money, your parents decide everything in your life, so like, ugh. Okay, let me make, it, make stuff up, okay? Oh, I'm going to go to school tomorrow and I'm going to say, oh, I have a girlfriend in Canada. Well, you've never met her, but she's in Canada. That's Bloho. I just described Bloho. He invents houses that don't exist. He invents cars. He invents girlfriends, cheerleaders, constantly, even when people don't ask. Like, someone could ask him, hey, why do you do face pulls? And his answer would be, oh, well, it's because it helps with the, the shoulder mobility for when I have uh, sex with a cheerleader. Like, no one asked. And yet, it's always back to that subject. And that's an easy way also in life to know who's a, who's a liar and who's not. People who get laid don't feel the need to talk about it. You're going to be, you're going to know this, okay? But with Bloho, it's an endless stream of claiming he has threesomes. By the way, he claimed to have had over a dozen threesomes in his life. Threesomes, threesomes, threesomes. Even the biggest slayers I know, even the biggest pigs, don't get to that number. Do the calculus in your head. 13 times 2, that's 26. That's 26, and that's 26 at the lowest possible number because he said over. So he's claiming he managed to convince 26 women to have sex with him at the same time. It's not even plausible that he had sex with five women in his life. Who's going to buy that? It's like he forgets we can see his face. Uh, it, it, we blow. We see everything that's going on here. And we sort of know women, if, even if we're not women ourselves, we're all pretty aware of what they found attractive. I don't think that we shifted from Brad Pitt to uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame in the span of two years. I mean, the trends don't evolve that quick. No one likes bald guys with no teeth. No one. At least if you had teeth. At least, but he doesn't even have teeth. So, again, another lie. He also claims to be a public figure, which is the fame thing. Public figure, I mean, I don't, I don't think any, maybe the big names like, uh, like uh, Affinex, maybe Affinex is a public figure, but anyone else on YouTube Fitness, man, you go outside, no one is going to recognize you, no one cares. It's, it's a very niche community, and yet he claims to be one. And it's interesting too, because I dug into old pictures of him where he claimed that he was with fans, and what I found across the board is that those were either colleagues of his girlfriend, friends, people in his neighborhood, or people he actually asked for a picture. I found a black dude with dreads from way back in the days, like 2014, where he took a picture saying, oh, he's a fan of mine. The name of the guy was visible in the publication, so I found the guy. Yeah, I know I'm a creep. And then I sent him a message and he told me, oh, and I sent him the picture because he, didn't, he, he, he forgot Hemingway. He forgot the monster. How could he forget him? He's, He's the biggest natural on earth after all. It makes no sense. The guy must have, you know, a disability or something. But I asked him, hey, what happened there? And told me, oh, no, I remember that guy. He asked me for a picture. And the guy was black. Bla <coughs> sorry, black. I don't know what happened here. Got possessed by the mens. The guy was black. So I wonder if it was a way for Bloho to try and, you know, pretend he's not racist by asking a picture with a black dude. I don't know if he has a weird uh, obsession with black men. I think he does, I'm going to get into that later, but there's a lot of indication that he might have an appetence for that certain group. So for any brothers on this channel listening to me right now, if you come across him, don't bend over. Be very careful. He always attacks from behind, and sometimes it's dirtier than you would think. So that's all the public figure thing. And when it comes to the money, he claims 80k a year. Now, think, think hard. 
who makes any career as a single owner and still lives in a Section 8 housing with a gym in their living room, with a closet to record, and eating on a box squat. Eating garbage rice and low-quality bison on a box squat. Who does that? Because right now I just described the, the life of someone who's broke, someone who's on welfare, someone who's, who makes 80K wouldn't live in that type of condition. They wouldn't. They would have a car. I mean, nothing computes. They would buy a better camera. They would actually get an editing software. They would get better sound quality. He does none of that. So he has absolutely no money. And I have a little thing written here. I wrote Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, there's a lot of things to say about Thanksgiving. I think that here we're going to talk about a certain moment. A moment that I know that the hardcore Blaha uh, antagonists uh, know. And that moment is the peck and pie. The peck and pie, or pick and pie, I think it's peck and pie, was an interesting moment because it happened in uh, it happened at two different points in Bloho's history. The first point was one of the cringiest, one of the most hard to watch moments in the entirety of YouTube, where Bloho is at a table with his girlfriend's family next to his girlfriend's aunts, is eating peck and pie. Hopefully, uh, clearly having the time of his life because it's sugar, he's, he's happier uh, than a clam. And you can see that he completely short circuits and he forgets he's not on YouTube anymore. And he starts rambling about genocide and about the Native Americans. And he says, oh, oh, maybe it was in the UK. Please correct me in the comments if it was in the UK. But he starts telling, uh, telling stories about, oh, yeah, well, you know, you know, with Thanksgiving, and we're actually, it's the celebration of the genocide of the, the Native Americans. You know, we, we just, we wanted their, their land and we just took it. We just took it. That's what we celebrate here. It's genocide. And you can see the aunt next to him slowly trying to inch out of the frame because she's like, if this makes national TV, I'm going to lose my job. She might also have been moving because of the stench and because Bloho has no table manner, of course, he speaks with his mouth wide open. I mean, disgusting individual. And then the second chapter of this story was, a few years later, when Bloho was all alone for Thanksgiving, and he actually got himself a peck and pie, and he ate it on camera to show people that he was actually happy. And if the first video was pure cringe, this one was sad. Like, it, it was... Even if he's a piece of crap, you feel for him because he's basically alone. It's at the stage where he's all emaci emaciated. He looks like a mole rat and he's eating the pie. And you can tell that the, the slight pieces of pie stick into his gums and it hurts. It just, it's painful, but he has to pretend that everything is going right. So he's trying to smile and look at the camera, but you can see the pain in his eyes. It's like a torture movie. And he posted that because he thought that it would shut people down because it would prove that he has the money to buy a peck and pie, which, I mean, wow. And even Elon Musk doesn't buy peck and pies. You really have to be a big baller to buy that. And then also that he was having a good time. But the video conveyed the exact opposite. And that's because he lies like a teenager too. Teenagers don't understand how flimsy their, their lies are because they don't have the ability to understand what's going on. And so it's the same for him. So all of that money, fame, all of those women, all of that is just in his head. And he's trying really hard to convince people that it's actually happening because he has vulnerable narcissism. He needs people to believe his life is going right and he's actually a great guy because if he doesn't have that, that love and attention, he's just going to fall apart. And he's been falling apart for the past 15 years. And I'll, I'll get into that more. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the psychology thing because it's going to be the focus on, of a later video. So, before I transition to the next topic, I want to also say one thing that people don't, don't really get with this. First off, he has a, he has a lot of uh, things in common with Genova, meaning that Genova is the same. If you listen to Genova, he's going to sign a contract with Disney, he's going to marry Natalie Portman, he makes 100k a year CEO. I mean, when Genova says that, he's making fun. I mean, he's actually having a goof. 
Blue Who is not. Blue Who actually claims 80k a year, but he's dead serious when he says that. So he's even stupider than a guy who is legitimately retarded, clinically. It's not mean to say that Genova is retarded. And so when you compare the two, I mean, again, they like the same. They, 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 they always are actively trying to create a life that they've never worked for. And that leads me also to the, the fact that it, he's not the only one. I mean, he has a lot of flaws, but each and every one of his flaws can be traced back to a certain individual of YouTube fitness. Because everything I'm exposing here, other guys on the platform do the same thing. And it's because, and that's just, you know, it's, we're talking about theology here, but he feels like original sin to me. He really does feel like the amalgamation of everything that is wrong with humans. It's insane to see that, but sometimes I'm, I'm questioning myself. I'm like, maybe, maybe he was sent to earth to remind us of original sin, to know that we're not supposed to behave like this. Because he has it all, like greed, wrath, envy, uh, uh, lust, sloth. He has it all in his body. And that also is the reason why it's so interesting that he was the catalyst of it all. Because he started all of the bullshit on YouTube Fitness. I know people have forgotten because nowadays it's completely irrelevant, but Nadi or not, that's him. Dogging on supplements and then creating your own line of supplements, that's him. Drama videos, that's him. He, all of the toxic stuff that is now making the platform unbearable, he kickstarted. And he was bad at it, so other people who are more snake-like took it upon themselves to do it better, but he still had the origin of it all. It's It's... Sort of insane to see, I mean, and you will, you will hear more about that later in the Nadi or Not video I'm going to make, but that's something I wanted to put out there too. Now, I think we're going to end with this. The physique thing. There's a lot of claims with physique, and I've said multiple times that he's actually a failed bodybuilder, and I think that it's easy to prove at this point. But with him, there's something more interesting than that. He never actually had a good physique. And if you go way back to when he was young and apparently in his be the best shape of his life, when apparently he said he was in his prime, which was in his early 20s, which makes no sense, he had uh, all in his arms, he had no abs, the only body part that was sort of there up was his legs, he had no upper body, and that's when he was blasting gear. So he never had it. For, for genetic reasons, for uh, the lack of discipline that he showcases, he never had it. But he never let go of that dream either. He was never able to actually focus on strength because he still tries to be a bodybuilder. If tomorrow you gave him a magic pill and you said, hey, if you take that pill, you're going to lose all of your strength, but you'll look amazing. Like you'll look shredded, you'll have a six pack, you'll look aesthetic. He would take that pill so fast that he would bite two of your fingers with it. Like in an instant, he would be on you. And it's the reason why it feeds into his negativity and his attitude because he constantly is resentful of people who look big, uh, who look big and who look good. It's the reason why when he attacks someone, he, re he rarely punches down. First off, because it's not possible to punch down when you're 5'7 and you're a hunchback, but also because he has a, a love-hate relationship with both men. And we'll get into that topic later, but... Every single guy he attacks is some jacked dude. And it's because he's really deeply jealous of that. He's really insecure about looking like a, a garbage bag full of fat. Because for someone who doesn't care about looks, he's been through many cuts. And when he's talking about cuts, it's never water cuts. It's never a cut to get into a good weight class so that he can perform. It's always to look better. And for the, for the art, art calls out there, you remember the video he made at the Japanese restaurant with the yakitoris, the... The, the, the meat, the meat uh, brochette, I don't know how to say that in English, where he was discussing the future. And that's when he wanted to do a cut slash recomp to improve his outreach because he wanted people to see that he actually can look good. And his exact words were, and this is from memory, I want people to be able to see that, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. So I'm actually going to listen to him. That was, that was his main goal behind the cut. And when you listen to him too, back in that day, that was in the UK for sure. Beforehand, because the, 
Japanese stuff was with, was with Moon Cookie. The, the cut stuff was back when he claimed that he was able to go below 10% body fat. And he claimed to have gotten at 5% body fat. And he said that he hated it. And that the only reason he couldn't maintain that is because of his appetite. He, of course, was never 5% body fat. He was never even below 10%. I would also put money on the fact he was never below 15%. He doesn't have the discipline. <clears throat> and all of the pictures of him being shredded to the socks were lost in the great fire. That's his thing. You know, kids say that the dog ate the homework. Bloho claims that there was a fire that destroyed his house and all of the pictures. Issue is, we know where he used to live and I couldn't find any articles in newspapers about a fire. So I don't even know why I did that research. I'm just, I'm just obsessed, I guess. But there was no proof. There was never a fire. So again, he's lying. It never happened. But he's still obsessed with that ability to, to cut. And it's sort of ironic because in the video, he was stuffing his face with some of the most fattening stuff. Because it's, it's meat with cheese soaked in like soy sauce, sugary soy sauce. Speaking about a cut, I mean, it's, it's poetry at this point. It's, it's the fat guy who's explaining to you that he's going to lose all that weight while shoving a whopper in his mouth. At least back in the days, he could chew. Now he doesn't chew anymore. He's like a pelican. He just swallows down his gullet, which, by the way, is going to destroy his stomach. He, the... the the, the place where he lives must stink to high heaven with all of the farts that he lets out because he also never eats vegetables. So it must be just rancid. I'm, I'm sorry for that mental image. But the day they invent a YouTube where you can actually get the, 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 the smell sense as well, his channel is going to be a real peach. And the reason why he can't stay lean, of course, is because of his appetite. And he presents that as a good thing. He says, oh, I have a voracious appetite. <clears throat> because in his head, I think he thinks it makes him look cool. Because it makes him look like, oh, I can eat all that food. But he has a garbage metabolism. Because he stores all of that as fat. It's not like he burns it. So I don't even know why he's saying that. I think it, he thinks it's cool. It's manly to eat a lot of calories. But if you end up looking like a pregnant elephant at the end, there's really no point. Calories and fuel is for a purpose, it's for strength or, for, or to fuel muscle, but if it's just to sit on your couch, I mean, you're just, you're just fat. I mean, it's not athletic at all. And also, and that's something that people mentioned and that I have to correct, he does look terrible also at low body fat. There's a picture of him at not, not sub 10%, but where he's lean and he's just skin and bones. He has no muscles. Which is the reason why I said he never got below 15% body fat, mostly with muscle. Of course, if you just let yourself get completely go and you look like you just, you know, you just got done with chemotherapy, it's different. But you can see all of his muscle and all of his frame, his hips are impossibly wide. They look like coat angers. They look, they're wider than his shoulders. When he's done with all of the fat and there's no fat, they're wider than his shoulders. It's upsetting how big they are and I think he's realized that so his only solution is to cover that up with blubber and hope that people think it's muscle and that's the reason why also when he tries to go bear mode he's actually going pork mode he doesn't have enough muscles to go bear mode which is funny because he tried to embrace that nickname by, by calling himself the orc but orcs have pretty not small legs but they mainly have big upper bodies they have big shoulders big traps that's the way an orc look yeah, they have thick legs, but that's not all they have. If you only have thick legs and a big ass, well, I mean, you, you have six kids, you're, you know, you're a, a big mama. That's what he is. He's pretty much big mama. We could make a remake of that movie. Remember that movie? I love that movie. Big Blaha. That would be an amazing movie. We can cast him. I mean, he's not super expensive. You can just feed him with Jasmine Rice. And we're going to finish here for this episode with this one. He's actually obese. If you look at his uh, actual stats and not his insane inflated FFMI, he's actually obese. But he preferred to invest in fake plates when he got into the car accident and he got the insurance payment instead of actually losing weight, getting a nutrition coach and learning how to train or fixing his teeth. He had 15 things in his life that were more important like actually stop being a parasite and get a job or something. And no, he went straight for the fake plates. That is actually amazing.
That's a level of dedication to being a fraud that is commendable. He's, he's outdoing Affleanex. He also bought a fish lens that is completely useless, but makes him look bigger on camera. I'll get to that in other installments. And fake subs, because as I explained last time, he bought fake subs to look better. How much, how much of your money as a taxpayer did he spend on fake subs? That's infuriating. So that's that. I already explained uh, the, the strength curve. The reason why he doesn't lose, uh, lose weight is because he would lose all of his strengths. And that's that. He could have at least have invested in a good mic. I mean, if you're going to create an ASMR channel and try to make money out of it, I mean, be a, you know, be a gentleman. If you're going to take the mic with you to the bathroom and piss for your audience, at least give us a good sound quality so then we can hear the clear stream of your urine hitting the water. That's the least that you can do for your fans, Bloho. And I'm going to leave you with that. So keep an eye out for the video that he's going to delete. Download it if you have the time. We already have it downloaded and archived, so no worries about it. And I'll see you next time.